Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another R Crypto video. On today's video, we can see that the markets are up. It's looking green everywhere. The markets are up by almost 3.5%. It's now standing at almost 2.1 trillion in terms of market cap. You can see Bitcoin was about 40,000, 39,500 a couple of days ago. It's by, bounced back quite a bit to almost 43,700. Ethereum has also bounced back. It was at 3,000, now at 3,300. Um, BNB is up. Everything's up. Every single coin is up, except for Chainlink, down by half a percent. This may be just be a correction, but looking at the little chart here, it still remains at quite high prices compared to before. So the markets are healthy. The markets are doing pretty well, and it's green in the last 24 to 48 hours, and hopefully it continues going like this in the coming future. Near protocol hits all-time high as upstart blockchains win with phone trade. In October, near protocol was around seven dollars. It more than doubled. Now it's standing at seventeen dollars. At one point, it reached all-time highs of eighteen dollars on Wednesday. And why this happened is two main reasons that analysts think. It's because the token has been undervalued, and others pointed to new developments on the protocol. And the fact that transaction volumes from near have been on the rise recently. It means that a lot more activity has been going on um, in the network. A lot more developments have been going on in the network. With newer projects being developed in the near protocol, the number of transactions going up, as you can see, it just exploded. From July 2021, it tripled. The, one of the main reasons why uh, near protocol has gone up so much is because it's undervalued. Juan Pelliker, an analyst at Into the Block, said that the market has treated it as an undervalued project for a very long time compared with other layer one protocols, which are platforms that can support products and services built atop these networks. So you have the layer one network, which is near protocol, and then uh, decentralized apps, DeFi networks, and all of these other ones are built on top of that, just like in Ethereum, just like in Solana, just like in Polkadot. From the infrastructure point of view, it is a blockchain with a working fast sharded proof of stake mechanism. From the application layer point of view, its wallet has accessibility improvements. So it's a quick proof of stake mechanism. So the more near that is staked, the faster the network gets. And the increased activity in the networks means that part of that activity comes from staking. According to Pelliker, several protocols launch on your protocols chain and many users like the experience. So now it's more about the user experience rather than what's there to offer because there isn't so many revolutionary um, innovations going on in the crypto space. It's mainly layer ones, layer twos, uh, gaming, metaverse, web three. It, it switched from what can you change in the world to how can you improve the user experience. So a lot of these protocols being launched on the Neo protocols chain and with such positive feedback from the community is a good sign. And that's why there has been increased activity, more adoption. Also, there has been uh, a lot of development in Neo Protocol. They undergone an aggressive building recently, and they said that it's up to the sixth largest ecosystem with the four times growth. The growth alongside mammoth sized development funds and the total value locked, which is significantly below its peers, is continuing to drive capital into the network. Because total value locked is so low, and the price is relatively low, and the market cap is relatively low compared to other layer one protocols, a lot more money is going to flow into it because it's scalable, it's fast, and the experience is good. So a lot of money is going to go flow into it because of the possibility of high returns. If you have a $60 billion market cap, you need another $60 billion to get 2x. But if you have $6 billion, you only need $6 billion to get 2x. So this phone trade is Phantom, Harmony, Atom, and Near. These are smart contract platforms that are scooping up a lot of the excess crypto native liquidity looking for a home. And it seems like these ones are less correlated with Bitcoin and Ethereum because at a time when Bitcoin, Ethereum and major cryptocurrencies are doing quite badly, the phone are doing quite well. Checkout.com raises $1 billion and eyes Web3 push. They raised this $1 billion in a Series D funding round at a $40 billion valuation. And they want to continue focusing on strengthening their position in the Web3 sector. Checkout.com is also beta testing a system to settle transactions for merchants using digital currencies. So Checkout.com is going to venture from fiat to allow its merchants to settle digital currencies. And this is important because a company of the size of Checkout 
whoever they partner with, whichever layer two solution they partner with, be it a Bitcoin Lightning Network or a ZK Rollup, we have to keep an eye on them because as soon as they announce that XYZ company is partnering with checkouts in order to process their digital currency transactions for their merchants, it's the price of that platform is going to shoot up really, really, really quickly. Bank of America surprisingly said that Solana could become the visa of the digital asset world. The Solana blockchain focuses on scalability, low transaction fees, and ease of use, and this is why it can become the visa of the digital asset ecosystem because for it to become the visa or uh, for it to have peer-to-peer -peer transactions, it needs to be quick and it needs to be cheap, which Solana is. Um, Solana has experienced strong adoption since launching in 2020. It has settled over 50 billion transactions compared to the 165 billion for Visa, and it has more than 11 billion in total value locked with an excess of 5.7 million NFTs minted. So um, the Solana blockchain is also becoming a hub for NFTs beside Ethereum because it's cheaper Ethereum gas fees are insane, especially in NFTs. And Solana is also optimized for consumer use cases such as micropayments and gaming. With micropayments, what we mean is if you go to a supermarket, you want to buy a, uh, your weekly groceries and it comes to $50 or $100 or whatever. You go with your Visa card, you swipe and it's done. With Solana, it can be done the same thing. You go to like a crypto grocery store, for example, for argument's sake, you whip out your Solana wallet, they scan it, in an instant, in less than five seconds, and costing less than a dollar in fees, you can pay for your groceries. However, scalability comes with a trade-off. There are several network performance issues that come with scalability, and it's been going on since inception. And Ethereum prioritizes decentralization and security, but at the expense of scalability. So Solana, if they hit the nail of decentralization, security, and they combine this with the scalability, I believe that they have a chance to even surpass um, Ethereum as a top dog in DeFi. Why Brazilians are turning to stable coins like Tether? So between January and November 2021, locals traded $11.4 billion in stable coins and almost tripled the total trade in 2020. Rising inflation is one of the factors that drove the phenomenon of stablecoin purchases. Um, and in 2021, it was over 10%, the highest it's been since 2015. Brazilians also want to hedge against the steady depreciation of the US dollar, so it's a double tragedy, which is high inflation and depreciation of the dollar. The real, which is Brazilian currency, went from 0.25 in January 2020 to $0.18 this month, which is a massive devaluation. Also, when acquiring foreign currency, Brazilians are forced to pay a tax on financial operations, and this ranges between 1.1 and 6.38%, and this tax does not apply to stablecoins which makes it attractive for Brazilians because they don't need to pay fees. They can get those stable coins. It retains its value. It's a hedge against inflation and it's agile because it's so liquid. It can be traded with any other cryptocurrency or they can make payments with this USDT very easily. Also, uh, there are a lot of Brazilians that said that the US dollar provides liquidity, but the process to acquire it in Brazil is very slow and bureaucratic. With the stable coin, you just press a few buttons and you get it like that. So you can have dollars without actually having dollars. Another factor is that because of the uh, rapid decrease in Brazil's interest rates, uh, people are turning more into stable coins and placing them into uh, DeFi protocols such as Curve and Anchor in order to get a return of 15 to 20 percent, whereby if they put it in a fixed deposit, it's less than six, seven percent. So it just makes stable coins a lot more attractive to Brazilians and a lot more attractive to Latin American countries. Uh, population in general due to their high inflation rates and devaluation of a lot of their currencies. Cash App integrates Bitcoin Lightning Network for faster Bitcoin transfers. So the popular pay mobile payment services Cash App, which is developed and owned by Block, uh, which CEO is Jack Dorsey, the former um, CEO of Twitter, this company has integrated the Bitcoin Lightning Network as part of an update allowing faster and cheaper Bitcoin transfers using the Layer 2 payments protocol. And it's interesting because with the Lightning Network, it's instant. If you want to trade cryptos, if you want to trade Bitcoin, it's instant, instant, instant. Because what happens is, the, essentially the Lightning Network, when you use it, you can make several purchases during the day and it's instantaneous. Um, let's say you buy groceries and then you go to your dry cleaners and then you go to a restaurant and then you go to a um, barbershop and they all accept crypto payments. 
and you did five different transactions. All those five different transactions are instantaneous. They sit then within the Lightning Network and then they get bundled together and then they get sent as one transaction to the main layer one Bitcoin network, which makes it cheaper because they only have to pay one fee. And this is how they achieve such cheap transaction costs. And Lightning Network is the future. It will become like the Visa and MasterCard of Bitcoin, just as CK Rollups is going to be the Visa and MasterCard of uh, Ethereum. Finally, a third of Americans are going to buy Bitcoin by the end of 2022. Edelman, founder of the financial advisory outfit Edelman Financial Engines, he said that 24% of Americans already own Bitcoin and it's becoming more mainstream, so more people are just going to own it going forward. Um, and they said that uh, the ACC is running out of excuses to say no in terms of Bitcoin regulation and accepting the trade of Bitcoin in the U.S. freely. A lot of the concerns that the SEC has have been resolved by the industry through their own maturity, innovation and development. I'm confident that we will see the SEC say yes because there is no legitimate reasons for them to say no. What they're talking about here is the spot Bitcoin ETF, which they say could come um, into play in 2023. And of course, it will have to come into play because the futures ETF has already come into play. He also says that Bitcoin is going to become as common in the next couple of years as any other portion of a portfolio. So crypto is here to stay. Crypto is here to become people part of people's portfolio. Crypto is here to improve people's lives by making transactions quicker and cheaper. It's here to be integrated in gaming. It's here to be integrated in the metaverse. You will see in a couple of years time, digital assets will rule. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button and share the video with your friends and family. I'll see you for the next one. Invest wisely and cheers.